Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We are back. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to our channel. Turn on the alerts bell so that you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up and hit the like button. All right, let's welcome everybody. Fernando, I missed you too yesterday. All right, good evening from London. Hi, what's up with Ape? We will cover that. Notorious love, thank you. From both Aiken and Hamid, I appreciate that. Fernando, LFG, all right, let's do it. All right, we have, I don't know, we have Vanuatu, Oklahoma. Okay, Germany. Germany in the house calling us the most underrated crypto show. I appreciate that. Okay. We have Florida, right? We have California, Myrtle Beach, Halifax, UK. All right. Michael, welcome. Welcome on the show. Okay. We have Africa, Chicago, Baltimore, Idaho, Argentina. Love to see everybody coming from all over the world. Okay. Holy moly, Bill. What a ride we've been on Jasmine. Louisiana and Kansas City are here. God, I swear. There was this guy who called in on Jasmine like three or four days in a row. And it just went down and down and down. And I was like, you know what, man? This is like, this is such a huge give up trade, right? I, I just don't know if there's, there's got to be a catalyst to turn it around. And I don't know if that guy's listening out there, but what a call he made, right? What a favor he did for us by getting that on the show. So you could see what the give up trade looked like. It was so severe. It was crazy. And then that thing just turned around. So if you're looking for ApeCoin and you're looking for Jasmine, don't go anywhere. Because we've got that and we've got price predictions and a roadmap for like the weekend, right? Because we've talked about this. Uh, you know, the market kind of goes up, right? There's the Fed. Then, you know, the Russians try to escalate. That didn't work, all right? The market's rallying. Now what's going to happen when there's the weekend escalation? So we're going to go through all of this, right? So we have go Red Sox. All right. Hi, Hoff. How you doing? East Africa, Tanzania, Ethiopia, right? Rhode Island. Okay. Looks like we got somebody possibly coming in from the Ukraine, right? Kansas City. All right. And all the way out in Los Angeles and Vancouver, West Coast. Bradford, England. Paul, welcome. Okay. All right. So we are, we are going to kick in to your market update. All right. So let's jump into that and let's get everybody going for this weekend. Now the theme is crypto up first. That's kind of already happening right? And then oil up later, which probably means crypto down, but that's not today's trade. All right. Um, WIC 10 gives you 10% off. Okay. 10% uh, off lifetime. Uh, maybe uh, my producer in the background, can you, can you talk into my ear if there's a new updated coupon code for our friends? Uh, yes. So as of right now, uh, we just changed the promo code. That one still works, I believe. But you can also use WIC 25 all. And it's, yeah, that's 25% off on any plan. Okay. So we're, we're up in our discount game for you for Women in Crypto Month or Women's History Month. So WIC 25 all, okay, gives you 
25% on token metrics. So if you want to know what's going on in Jasmine and ApeCoin, along with other small altcoins, okay, the new promo code is WIC25ALL, right? 25% off token metrics. Don't miss it. Now let's jump into Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin looks like our idea that Bitcoin has one of two upside objectives. It's either 42,700 or 40, 46,600. All right. So right now the crypto market is an object in motion. So I'm assuming 42,700 is next. All right. Now let's take a look at crypto connected equities. Haven't done this in a while, right? So we have Coinbase's stock and what do we have? We have a bullish downward sloping wedge, right? It's like taking a football or a soccer ball and pushing it down underneath the water in a pool. And it requires a lot of force to push it down, push it down, push it down. That's what the market's doing. That's what that downward slope is about, right? Bears just leaning on it. Then what happens is once you're holding the ball, the ball underwater, when you let go, the ball just pops to the surface and actually pops above the surface. So the harder you try to hold the ball under the water, the harder it bounces outside the water. And that's what's going on in Coinbase, right? Along with momentum divergences, bullish momentum divergences. And you're like, Bill, what's a bullish momentum divergence? Well, it's when, you know, the market makes lower lows, but a momentum indicator like an RSI, like we have down there on the bottom, makes higher lows. So that's the mathematical expression of the bears trying to push that market down underneath the water, but then unsuccessfully, that's how the ball pops higher. So you have a bullish downward sloping wedge bears pressing. And then you have this momentum indicator that shows the bear's arms are getting tired. They can't hold it down. And when they let go, boom. So this means that, you know, you could have, you could have a rather robust rally in Coinbase's shares, right? Now, how long is that rally going to last? I don't know. You know, three, four days, two weeks, right? I mean, it's an object in motion. Crypto's okay. We sort of suspected this after the Fed. We thought the Russians would escalate, but it didn't work. It didn't work. They thought they were going to bring China into the conflict, right? Zero Hedge, the blog, the famous financial blog was reporting that. So whatever they tried to do to kind of scare the market after the Fed, as of now, it didn't work. Now we know the Russians will be back Sunday night, but again, if they're not successful in escalating, Coinbase shares could do better. Now, talking about doing better, holy cow, famous bellwether stock for crypto, Galaxy Digital. Mike Novogratz, my favorite hedge fund, my favorite hedge fund manager, okay, popping like 13% today. So if you want to know the power of these downward sloping wedges and these divergences, right, you can witness it with the big rally in Galaxy today. So as long as Galaxy continues to rally, okay, right? Crypto is okay. Now, which is going to do better, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Well, I think Bitcoin is probably in for a break, right? 42,700 seems like resistance. Now, back to a theme that we've been talking about on the show for over a week. Ethereum, relative to inflation expectations, is just too cheap, right? I did not want to sell Ethereum at 2,500, right? I don't. All right. So what this graph shows in blue is inflation break-evens, five-year inflation break-evens. That's legacy cocktail party talk for what the bond market requires as compensation, right? In terms of interest rates on a five-year loan, given what's happening with inflation. So as you can see at the top of the graph, the blue line makes higher highs and higher highs, right? And ETH was following along for a while, and now ETH is like <laughs> pushed out of a car, right? Sitting at 2,500, right? Or was, right? And now it's like closing in on three. 
And we'll give you a couple scenarios of where ETH could go. But the fact of the matter is with inflation, the dollar going up, food going up, you know, historically, based on our statistical work, that's been good for ETH. So in a way, analytically, we had, you know, we had a good, good indication or a good call on this. Now, let's like dive deep into ETH charts. So this is our ETH trading strategy. So you'll notice on the DeMarc chart for ETH that, you know, there was a nine top briefly, right? But then ETH started to resume the rally. So this rally in ETH could last, I don't know, another two days, three days, right? So this is Friday, March 18th. You know, you may be looking at, you know, another week of this possibly, okay? Uh, maybe more. So the, the first level is 3,036. So 3,036 is resistance, right? You would only really buy ETH if it broke above it came back and returned, right? And then the next level would probably be 3,200, okay? So, you know, if there's a breakout above 3,000, 3,200 seems to make sense, right? And then if it really gets wild, this is from the DeMarc chart on the ETH, you know, ETH daily chart with DeMarc work, I should say, right? The, the resistance where ETH has, you know, stopped a couple times, is basically at 3,400. So if ETH is above 3,000 and stays there, then you could be looking at 3,400. And that could mean DeFi and altcoins and, you know, all kinds of stuff could go up because frankly, we were talking about this before the Fed. Wouldn't it be funny if everybody started speculating, right? Right around the Fed and right around when things are scary. We've seen this before. Now, the question is, the fact is that you have to enjoy the party and then get out before the next sort of shoe drops. That could be a week or two away, all right? You want to make your money now, right? You want to take your money, but this idea of ETH really being, you know, something that's got to catch up, you know, that's gaining traction. Now, let's look at specific altcoins. Um, looking at this divergence, PERP right? Decentralized derivatives hasn't gone up that much. Had this ugly new low. Stochastics didn't match the new low. Very positive potentially on what PERP could do on the upside, right? DeFi, right? Old school DeFi. So, you know, your Uniswaps, the synthetics breakout today was spectacular. Ave bottom three days ago. You know, you've got this downward sloping wedge formation and that bullish stochastics divergence in DeFi. So this is the DeFi per futures contract. So it is very possible to have these altcoins rallying, you know, for up to four, four to five days, possibly, right? I mean, if ETH's going to 3,500, altcoins are following. Okay, Avalanche, Taz, I don't know if you're out there, but I know Taz is sleeping a lot better these days, right? Because Avalanche stopped turned around, took out 78, all right? And then now is headed for resistance up near 91. So Avalanche was severely underperforming, right? After, you know, six to nine months of being a stud coin, right? Now, again, resistance up at 91 is next, Rune. Now this is tricky, right? Because Rune was outperforming when everything was going down. So you might be afraid that Rune could underperform as everything else catches up. So 781 is important in Rune. If Rune was above that, I'd be a little bit more relaxed. But you actually may get a deeper dip in this, right? You may get, you know, not a huge dip, but you may get one more dip to try to get involved, not investment advice, okay? Rune is, specula is cool, speculative, right? And they don't know if the tech can execute. Okay, now if Rune starts breaking out again, like above 781, it can go to 870. My inclination on Rune is try to be patient. I know there's like huge FOMO on the upside. Maybe let ETH and that stuff rally and then grab Rune on a dip. Jasmine, oh my God, would you look at this thing? Okay, now after this massive give up trade, 
Okay, we talked about this on the air and we've been giving you levels along the way. Now, if this thing is an object in motion, right, and everybody gave up on this, then there's a possibility this thing could go all the way up to like 0.046, right? I could even draw 0.055. So if they're, if they're mooning this thing and people are chasing it, man, right? I mean, because I was there at the bottom. I was there at the bottom with this despondent dude. So it, it's almost like an unforgettable bottom, the despair and the nastiness of that chart and how quickly it turned, okay? Now, Phantom, a bottom we got, okay? If Phantom takes out 129, I think there's a lot of room for Phantom to go up, right? Phantom also has the bullish stochastics divergence going on, right? And it's made a nice base between 104 and 129. So everybody gave up on this, and I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. Privacy, Zcash, hey now. Zcash outperformed, and Bitcoin didn't get wrecked. Oh my God, this time really is different. Seriously, right? Because normally when Zcash or Litecoin or Dash outperform, the market dumps. Well, guess what? Zcash has been outperforming and the market didn't dump, right? If anything, it just stopped and turned around and went higher. So this privacy thing is the real deal. Yeah, there's resistance at 160, but, you know, if we're going to have, I don't know, if we're going to have a two-week crypto rally, you know, Zcash is, is probably going to participate. Because, again, where is Zcash? It's right there where it was at the start of the year, right? So are a lot of these other coins, right? It's just, you know, they just reset themselves almost. Looks rare, okay? I was at South by Southwest yesterday, and some guy comes up to me and he goes, what do you think it looks rare? I said, well, people have been asking me about it on the live stream, right? Because we got a lot of smart people on the live stream. Look, giving some love to you people out there. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, and I was like, hey, what do you think of this? I was like, well, you know, our, our fundamental guys flagged this thing, right? There's like a lot of wash trading, a lot of suspicious stuff. Looks rare, fell out of bed. Now, who's going to touch it? Everyone hates it. What happens when everyone hates it? What happened to Jasmine when everyone hated it? <laughs> when everyone hates it, it goes up, particularly if it has any redeeming value or any story coming out. And I don't see any resistance in looks rare to $1.76. Now, not investment advice. Do your own research. Okay? So we don't know if they still had problems, but I, as I said to the guy at South by Southwest at the token metrics booth, I was like, hey, <laughs> If everyone hates it and there's a story, it can go up. It can go up until people stop hating it. That goes for the whole crypto market. ApeCoin, right? Assuming I got the right symbol here, this is what you tuned in for, right? 1561 is the key level in ApeCoin. If ApeCoin is able to take that out, then people will ha ha ape in, okay? So either the trade is done, which seems unlikely right? If ETH is going higher, right? This thing can go along with it, right? So the key level is 1560. If ApeCoin's above 1560, right? Then you have room to go to either 18 and a half or 24 and a half. Now, mind you, if ApeCoin does not take out 1561, I don't know that I would necessarily be FOMOing in, right? In other words, let this thing show the bulls are in charge. This is really the first dip. So again, this is March 18th, near the end of the day where equities close. All right, let's just see what happens with this. Now, a brief word, right? I know you got the FOMO going today, right? I know ETH is leading and probably will continue to do so. But there's something you need to understand about oil. One. Bitcoin and Ethereum are negatively correlated to oil. So that means oil goes down, crypto goes up. And that's exactly what's been happening lately, right? Oil went down and then crypto went up. Makes sense, right? So you're asking yourself, well, what happens if oil goes back up again? Well, if oil goes back up again, that might hurt crypto and stocks. Now, Zero Hedge, through another researcher, is reporting with a Bloomberg graph 
that the U.S. government has run the strategic petroleum reserve down about as low as it can go. Okay, in the bottom right-hand corner, it's called days of supply in the strategic petroleum reserve, which is what you keep around for war and other disasters. So the U.S. government keeps dumping oil into the market to keep gas prices down. Meanwhile, they're putting the United States national security at risk. And this commentator, right, featured in Zero Hedge is asking one key question. What happens when the U.S. government has to buy oil back? What are they? It doesn't drop out of the sky. They got to go in and buy it all back. Well, what happens? Well, I, I have, if oil takes out 123, oil may wind up at a technical target of 200, which is exactly what the fundamental article says, published by Zero Hedge. Now, where is Bitcoin, crypto, and equities with oil at 200? Okay, I'm guessing, okay, I'm guessing that's not a good scene. So this theme post-Fed, so let's review, right? Everybody got bearish. The Fed came out, all right? We got certainty as to what they were going to do, which was kind of lame to fight inflation, but at least we know what they're going to do. The Russians were going to counter and try to make everybody upset, which they did. It didn't work. Equities continued to go up, and then crypto ripped. Okay, so that could continue, right, until the Russians do something that stops crypto and stocks. And if they can't, crypto and stocks won't stop. But as I continue to tell people, do not underestimate Mr. Putin. Make your money while you can on the upside, right? Make your money as a trader. Because when the music stops, if the music stops, whether it's at Bitcoin 42,700 or it's at Bitcoin 47,000, right? So now is the time to make money and consider what portfolio adjustments you want to make once this thing runs its course. Maybe you got four days, maybe you got two weeks, right? Just make sure your thinking cap stays on because when the market goes up for more than two days in a row, everybody gets kind of, I don't know, gets a little stupid, right? Not, not in a mean way. It's just that everybody is so happy that crypto's going up like me that, you know, you can forget about risk management. So don't forget about risk management and party on and carry on. And that's the market update. All right. Let's see what we got going on in the chat here. Okay. Wrong again says I'm going all in on the most speculative altcoins. Okay. You know, if you're going to go for it, right? Go for it while Mr. Putin's tactics of escalation are backfiring. It's as easy as that. Okay. So we have a couple of requests starting to come in here. Thoughts on DXY. So let me write down a couple of the requests that have come in. All right, and let's go and let's check out what's going on right over in the world of DeMarc. And let's get you people ready for your weekend. It's kind of like becoming a tradition, right? We, we get everybody ready on Friday for whatever's going to go on over the weekend. Okay, so I'm bringing it up here. Just give me one second. All right, here we are. Okay, so there's your 15-minute chart of ApeCoin. Okay, so I am watching it. All right, people are going to ask me about these coins, so I might as well go through it now. So here's Polkadot on its way back up to 19. I did have somebody, I did talk to a very smart whale at South by Southwest who told me that Polkadot is way out of, way out of uh, sort of is cheap. Let's put it that way, right? The returns in Ethereum versus the returns in Polkadot. Polkadot has outperformed for so long, right? That Polkadot is probably due to catch up to ETH. So if ETH goes up, Polkadot bulls who are suffering may suffer a lot less. Okay, Algorand still waiting to get above 78 cents. So there's kind of a little warning sign about volatility here. So be careful of those sellers in Al and Algorand above, you know, above that 78 cents level. 
Okay, near protocol. Now, near protocol hasn't done much, okay? But that doesn't mean it can't turn around and start doing something, okay? Near protocol did a nice bounce off $10.50. So if you've got a four or five day rally, really the question is, hey, what could I jump on that hasn't done much? Near and dot could be two of those coins, okay? All right, let's go. Let's check this out. Because I know we have somebody asking for LDO. I know that is like mooning hard. And actually, I've had somebody, whoever, you know, kudos to them. Whoever has been coming in and asking about this. If I've got this right, maybe I don't have it right. Okay. So this is, this is the Lido Dow token. All right. So like, like old coins, right? This was way up way, and back down again. I, I think the key with this is can it hold above this fractal at 320, 317, 320. So this is LDO daily. Okay. And the level in question is 318. So if LDO is above 318, then the upside, the, the rally can continue. Just be mindful of the fact that, you know, there is resistance up here, right? There, there, this thing, this is where the give up trade started from between 318 and 378. So not an accident that it whipped up here and came back down again. Okay, Crypto Jungle wants to know, is hex breaking down or is it a good buying opportunity well i don't know let's take a look okay so there's definitely some pain going on in hex okay let's look at a four hour chart Okay, let's try try to find some better hex data. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, so this is a better looking four hour chart. All right, so with hex, right? This is the alligator moving average system and the Williams oscillator. All right. Now, the good news, I guess, is that, you know, Hex made a new low, right? But didn't make a new low in momentum indicators. So that's constructive for Hex because you're seeing this all across altcoins. Okay. Now, that said, right, I always get a little nervous when this Williams oscillator gets to zero. All right. So let me answer your question that you asked, All right? If hex takes out, let's call it 12 cents. If hex could take out 12 cents, then you might be able to say a bottom is in. But if hex can't take out 12 cents, okay, you may be approaching a give up trade, right? I mean, hex has gone down, but there have been some hope rallies here, right? I mean, you know, in other words, it's very easy, it seems, to get these ramps in hex. Now, this is a much smaller ramp. So if it doesn't work, if they can't get above 12 cents, let me label this the hex four hour chart. Okay. Now, I know this is a really interesting coin. You know, we, we actually a long time ago had the founder on, right? So when this thing is going up, it's really going up. Okay, but if people are exiting, you need to be mindful of that, right? Follow what happens at 12 cents. Okay, so we're going to go through alpha. Okay, you know, I've said about alpha, we liked it. It broke our hearts. It's probably a long-term staking play, not investment advice, right? Okay, so, I mean, this thing got totally destroyed. Let's look at a daily chart of alpha. Okay, so the 13 bottom is in. All right. 
And now Alpha is headed the other way along with the rest of DeFi. All right, so we're on a DeMarc 4, so there's probably going to be, you know, five, potentially five more constructive days in Alpha, right? Th uh, 33 cents is a possible target, okay? It's also possible you could see 35 cents because that was an old high. So we're cheering for Alpha, but again, most likely the way to make money with this token, if there is a way, is to stake it and get the tokens, right, that, you know, the airdrops from the tokens on their launch pad. But, I mean, this definitely did not turn out the way we thought it was going to turn out. Okay, you've got Nano. Boy, I swear to God, if there was ever, if there was ever an example of the bullish downward sloping wedge working, it was Nano. Okay, so on the DeMarc work, I don't have a lot of history on the, the new symbol, but... It's pretty obvious that people are buying it at this DeMarc point at 230. So people are buying the dip in this thing. And I don't blame them, right? I mean, you know, this, this could be a one coin. This could be a one coin market, all right? So if you look at Nano, right, there was the DeMarc 9 top, right? But remember what I told you about this, right? You get the 1 through the 9. Those are, you know, that's the DeMarc system's way of, counting a certain set of conditions, right? So it'll count one set of conditions from one to nine. And then if there's a range, that's a top or a bottom. But if it's not a range or it's a trend, right? You'll get one through nine, a counter trend move, and then it'll go one through 13. It's called, you know, you go from set up, counter trade, and then it's called countdown. This nano, this nano coin got its nine top and people are buying the dip. The DeMarker Smart Stochastic, that's the thing down on the bottom. This thing's flashing red, which means volatility is coming. So I have no idea why anybody would bet against a, a coin, a cryptocurrency that has got almost no transaction fee and lightning fast execution. I had a colleague that was really into this, right? And he stayed really into it and it just makes so much sense. So Mr. Market is telling you on the chart that, you know, people want this coin. People want it. All right, now, Jasmine, we covered it in the market update. I, I don't think I have it. I don't think I have it in the DeMarc system, right? Oh, actually, let me, let me not assume, let me check. Well, what do you know? As me in the DeMarc system. Okay, let's look at the daily chart. Okay, so there was the 13 and the 9 bottom at the bottom. Right? Incredible, right? That was where the give up trade was. That was the bottom. That's when our friend was coming in and saying, hey, what about Jasmine? Okay. Now, you know, easy to say there was a 13 and a nine bottom here. Then there was this monster give up trade. So it's like they bottomed it. It should have bottomed. It didn't. They killed it. And now, I mean, when you have something like that, where people just are like, oh my God, I'm done. I mean, this thing is flashing volatility. And I, I don't know, like, like, like I said, resistance is up here. Like maybe it's, you know, maybe it's approaching four cents. Okay. But this thing's an object in motion with ETH higher. So people could just continue, right? Somebody's saying jazz me to 10 cents. Okay. Uh, buddy just signed on. Have I covered Matic yet? Buddy, welcome. No, I have not. Okay. All right, so like all these altcoins, there's room. There was the nine top, right, on the four-hour chart, but that only gave you like, I don't know, a day down. Now it looks like everything wants to run to resistance at like 165. So, you know, frankly, if you were long Matic, you can stay long Matic, not investment advice. And frankly, on the daily chart, you know, you may have six more updates, okay? 
All right, now somebody wanted somebody wanted an update on some of our other charts, okay? Somebody's like, I missed I missed AVAX, right? Do you think I head into Cosmos instead? Okay, interesting comment. <clears throat> I did notice that Cosmos wasn't doing much, all right? Normally when you get these rallies, things move in like stages. Like the first thing that moves is the stuff everyone hates. That was like Jasmine and some of the smaller coins. Then DeFi 1.0 took off. First it was Ave, then synthetics, right? The stuff everyone hates looks red. You know, that's the way these, these sort of like, you can call them bottom, you know, local bottoms, bear market rallies, whatever, right? Now Cosmos showing signs of life. There's a DeMarc 9 bottom you know, on the, on the daily chart, you know, resistance is not up until 3469. So Cosmos has got a lot of room to, to go up, you know, frankly, as does Polkadot. Okay. The four hour chart almost shows the same picture. Okay. No, that was the same picture. So, you know, Cosmos can go to 30. 31 or it can go to 34, but you know, I would not get in. I mean, this, this is a market that's probably breaking out because ETH is just too cheap. It's just too cheap, right? Wow. People really flying in here. First of all, anybody who's new to the stream, right? Or who's just coming in. Cause I know we have some people who come for PowerPoint and some people who come for requests. I want to welcome everybody and invite you to do what? Hit the like button. We're dying to see one of those weekends where we get above 500 likes. Oh my God, you're in finance. You know, this is another pet project. I'm like, you know what? How, how, how is anyone selling this thing? I didn't understand that. How was it down at 18,000? I don't get it. I mean, it's taken out resistance at 20,500, right? And part of me is almost like, who cares? I mean, you know, Medi, our director of research, has got has got your finance on like a you know psychologically, not investment advice, but like a like kind of like a long term hodl in his mind, right? So let's go to Yearn over here. Okay, Yearn's up six percent today. You know. Okay, so urine does have upside to say, if you look at a four hour chart, probably 23K, right? If this is going to continue. All right, so let me just label this. This is urine four hour. So, I mean, if this continues, right? If ETH goes to 3,300, then you're going to have urine at 23. Now, in terms of like DeFi, in terms of, People going, you know, gee, I need a, I need a different banking system. I mean, oh my God, look at this. You know, this, this I thought was going to be constructive here and oh, right. That's the opposite, unfortunately, of a downward sloping wedge. That's the upward sloping wedge, right? Where I was like, oh, maybe this is constructive. No, it's not. Okay. It, it led to a colossal give up trade in urine. Now let's see what I can do here. Whoops. All right, let's go to my Fibonacci resistance fan. A lot of times this can be very helpful at bottoms. Okay. So if urine is above 20, right? I think if urine is above 20, possibly the next level in urine is either 23 or 27. So not investment advice. And I know that over the weekend, we do have these like war style escalations, but you know what folks, they couldn't keep it down and the world does need a new financial system. So I would think urine has a shot at either 23 or 27. I know it's easy to say that on a green day, but sometimes you have to wait until these things fully get going. Now at a tactical level, I think you would want to see urine break above 21. What is this? 
21,300. So if you're trading it tactically and you feel like you missed it, 21,300 is the next level urine's got to take out. Okay, so I covered perp, right? Let's see if I can get over to audio. Okay, let's get the DeMarc work. Okay, so Audius in general, that's kind of like a long-term hodl sort of coin, right? I mean, the give up trade was so severe. The 13 bottom was actually before the invasion started. And now on the daily chart, it's actually building momentum after popping and bouncing off a DeMarc moving average. So again, this is constructive, right? 88 cents is possible. Let's see if the four hour chart gives us any better guidance as to like where resistance might be. All right. So again, here's the nine top and audience didn't stop it, came back down. Now it's moving again. So, you know, my guess is, is that you're going to see 84 cents, right? You see 84 cents. Let me look into RMRK. Okay, don't don't have that one. Let's look at IMX. Okay, we were just hanging out with Immutable X at South by Southwest. There's the 13 bottom with support at 148. So it looks like they want to take out 165 and take it all the way up to 192. So, you know, there have been some really big moves in Immutable X. And if you start to get some FOMO back in crypto, I mean, it's holding on a moving average on a DeMarc moving average, right? If you look at this. So if you want to be constructive, you know, if you think this thing's got four or five days, right? Or maybe more, $2.42. If you've been long and you've been suffering or you felt like getting long on this FOMO and, you know, you held off, then maybe this this actually looks this looks better to me than it did trying to FOMO in over here. Okay, J Man is looking for Elliott Wave on Jasmine. And because of that guy, man, I don't know where he is. But that, that guy, that guy basically made us the Jasmine channel. I mean, the 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 pain that was involved with that trade. Still today is staggering. All right, let's let's try to get some DeMarc Elliott wave here to see what this is telling us. Okay, well, I mean, it's telling you the obvious that, you know, there was a bottom in Jasmine and now it's starting its initial wave one up, right? No shit, we know that. Okay, currently in Jasmine, you're doing a three wave, right? So it had its initial move here. This is the one wave. And now this is the three wave right here. All right now, when do three waves end? Normally, when you get momentum divergences. So, you know, you've got this warning sign here, right? Not to get too ridiculous. Well, let me just get the DeMarc work back up here. Okay, so there's no sign of a DeMarc top when you look at the four hour chart. So, you're in a three wave and you've probably got, I don't know, four to six more hours. Right of uh, of you know people just fomoing it. So we covered this earlier. I'm just looking at the Demarc and Elliott Wave point of view. Right, uh, I have done Polkadot. Did talk to somebody over the weekend telling me that if Ethereum's going up, Polkadot could have a lot of catching up to do. A lot of catching up to do. Okay, Axia Coin is still going up. Right, I swear to God, if there was. <laughs> Like the number one reason I can come up with to subscribe to tokenmetrics.com, right, is that our system found this Axia coin. So it's coming off now, right? It's coming off, right? But that's kind of what it does, right? It, it goes up and then it looks like it's topping. I mean, this, this does feel a little heavy, right? It does feel a little heavy, but... 
People made so much money on this. I could tell you to get out, but you won't. The resistance point is 1497. That's where it might go if there was like a heavy FOMO type day. But I mean, it, it's an object in motion, right? And it's just strong like bull, right? Now, you know, I always think in a bear market or in a down market or a weird market that, you know, you take the money and you pay yourself, right? All right. So obviously, as I'm pulling all this up, I know that everybody, including the people who watch it later, which we appreciate, of course, but you're hitting the like button because that helps us, right? And it helps us help you. Now, engine coin, okay, like everything else, having kind of a big green moon day, always easy to be bullish on a moon day. But I mean, again, if you look at the daily chart, I mean, today's big green moon day doesn't even look like much, does it? Doesn't look like anything. So the next big DeMarc points at 176, um, engine coin was able to launch itself off a moving average at 135. So no, no reason to think that this can't join in with everybody else, right? Okay, and head to 176. Okay, let's do a market update. Somebody's telling me Bitcoin just completely ripped through resistance. Okay, so Bitcoin. Let's bring up our, our weekly chart. Okay, so again, on Bitcoin, like in the PowerPoint, you know, we're looking at 42,700 or 46,600. Right now, we have a, a secret upside target of like 52,000. That's possible. But, you know, if I start talking about that, you're going to be like, okay, you know, you're a moon boy. Right. I think the thing to focus on isn't necessarily Bitcoin right now. The focus on ETH is just too cheap. I've been saying this for over a week. It's just too cheap relative to what people think about inflation. Okay. But I appreciate that person bringing that up. Okay. Yes. Another reminder. Okay. WIC 25 ALL, WIC 25 all for 25% discount on token metrics. So if you want to be there for the next Axia coin, if you want to know what our AI thinks of Jasmine, right? Get on over to Token Metrics and check it out, right? Odin, no problem. No problem giving the late covers some love. Okay, so we've got KDA, right? I know we got KDA fans. And for the sake of my KDA fans, I hope it's mooning hard, right? It's up 2% today. Let's get a four hour chart going here. Oh. Okay. Okay. So if you look at a four hour chart of KDA, things are just starting to get turned around. Okay. Let's look at the daily chart. Right. I'm thinking KDA has to get to or could get to 702. Right. Uh, but you have to remember this alligator moving average system still points down. So KDA is going to need a fundamental catalyst. Of course, don't laugh. I said this about Jasmine, right? KDA is going to need a fundamental catalyst in order to get going. Now, if it finds it and it takes out 702, then you can look for $8.60. Okay. Okay. Iron Fist is asking about AVAX. So we covered that, but I know we got people who come in late. So there's going to be some reruns and, you know, we appreciate anybody who stays for the whole thing, of course. Right. So our theme is, you know, the fed came out. That was, you know, that removed some uncertainty. The U S inflation fighting strategy is kind of pathetic, but at least they told you what they were going to do. And then the Russians tried to escalate the conflict and for temporarily it didn't work. Okay. So AVAX, on the daily chart can go to $94.90, right? That was DeMarc resistance, okay? If you look at maybe a shorter term time frame in AVAX, okay? Okay, so if you look at like a four hour chart in AVAX, 
Okay. You know, resistance is all the way up here at 107. So I talked about 94 before, right? And then, you know, like I said, this thing is an object in motion. You just got to be, you know, you got to be mindful of these like red shaded areas. Sometimes they give you bottoms like over here, right? Sometimes they, they may give you tops. So, you know, it's always best to control FOMO. It made no sense to sell Bitcoin at 38 or 37, right? I know I said that 20 times and it probably doesn't make any sense to buy Bitcoin above 43 or 44. I mean, yeah, you might get 46 or 47, right? But I, you know, where's the risk reward? You got to buy this thing when it's down, right? You got to buy despair and sell euphoria. Okay. Dean said the bottom is in. Dude, I work for a crypto company. I would love that. I mean, if you go back to my inflation break even chart, okay. So, you know what? I just said no FOMO. So, if you want if you want a FOMO, like if you want FOMO, right? If you want to go crazy? Okay. Let's get crazy. Somebody said the bottom is in. Okay? This is Ethereum in orange. I'm using ETH -E is Ethereum in the stock market. Don't worry. It's, it's basically, you know, uh, something that follows Ethereum, right? I mean, if you, if you follow where inflation expectations are, that's the blue line in short, you know, it should be making a new high. So yes, if you want to say the low is in, and if you want to be a, you know, if you, if you're a moon man, right, then ETH can go much higher. Personally, you know, I think you got to make whatever money you're going to make right now, right? You know, Bitcoin may not do anything for four or five days. ETH might rally. You might have a good week at the end of the month. Maybe you just, I don't know. Just, I think that with this war situation, you trade it, you make the money, right? You grab it, you take your profits. And if you got long-term portfolios, you evaluate it at that point. Okay. People asking for flux. Okay, so what I do is flux hit a dollar thirty nine and bounced, right? The next level uh, Bill, on top is probably you're sharing the wrong screen. I'm sharing the wrong screen. Yeah, you're still on the PowerPoint. Thank you. Okay, flux one more time hits a dollar forty bounces, right? That's strong, but people have to be willing to pay higher prices. If they are willing to pay higher prices, it goes to 153. Okay. Jay does that. Welcome. Uh, Luna is getting cheaper. Is it a good deal? Well, it will be probably after one final heave or one final day of underperformance. So here's Luna, right? The, the juicy level in Luna is 79.50. Not sure it's going to get there. But if it did, I mean, that's where you would want to buy it, not investment advice. Okay. Luna is hanging around, right? So, you know, 87 was an old high, right? Uh, and now it's broken above that and it's hanging around where that ceiling has tried or is trying to become a floor. So sometimes I think it pays to be patient, right? Maybe Luna is at 79. Okay. But I think generally speaking, right. Once Luna does bottom, you're looking at prices well over a hundred. Truth be told, Luna was going up when everything was going down. So now if everything's going up, you may actually get Luna below 80. It may pay to be patient. Okay. Stephen Conway says, I'm not FOMOing in right now. Okay. That makes sense, dude. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, if you miss it, you miss it, right? I mean, the world's going to be a really weird place for a long time. So, you know, chasing everything on one up day, particularly with possible escalation over the weekend, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with self-discipline, right? Like I can show you an Ethereum chart that says, okay, well, Ethereum might go to 3250 or 3300. 
okay? But if you don't know how to locate the trade and can't manage risk and you have to walk away from it, then that's okay. That's actually very admirable and a lot harder to do than you would think. Okay, so Metis token on a four hour chart. Okay, I would say you get some clear evidence that this was turning around if it took out 151.6. So if you take out 151.6, then the Williams moving average system is telling you that you can get higher prices. Okay. All right. We appreciate the love from Iron Fist. Thank you. Okay. Okay. GMT. I could be wrong, but is this, is this the token that is like, you know, instead of play to earn, it's run to earn. This is very interesting. I, I'm pretty sure we covered this. You know, we, we got some guy in our office. I think the guy went for a, a guy went for a, a walk and made $92 in, in GMT tokens. Okay. So to be completely honest, this looks like insane FOMO. And most likely the profit taking level was 72 cents. Now, if 72 cents turns around and starts acting like support, then I guess you're going to have more Mooney. But to be honest with you, if I was long the token, I'd probably be taking profits here. I think the, the buying the NFTs, getting the sneakers and getting it so you can like work out to earn is better than FOMOing into the token, not investment advice. That was the indication from our research desk. Okay. Hey, you know what? Let's, somebody's mentioning, uh, let's see how Binance coin is doing. Remember, remember when it was all over for Binance? Wonder how that's doing today. Okay, so there's the daily chart of Binance coin. Feels like you got a lot of room to go up. Okay, you know, 13 bottom down here. Everybody gave up on this thing. Now it's pushing 400. Is it going to be able to make it through 400? I don't know, right? <clears throat> but it sure would be interesting, right? If the, if the market is going to go on like an altcoin run for four days and everybody gave up on Binance coin, right? Now this is flashing top. So, you know, I don't want to be stupid, right? There is resistance at 400, but I'm telling you right now, if 400 does not stop this thing, this can run because I know everyone hated this. So one, it, it may get resistance at 400 for multiple reasons, but if it doesn't stop at 400, it may not stop at all. Okay. Wrong again said just took profits on ETH. Okay. Let's see where ETH was. Right. Let's go back and look at the, like, let's just say, look at the 90 minute chart. We never do that. I keep it up here. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure. Okay. So Ethereum on the 90 minute chart. So here is a 13 top, right. And you're working on probably another 13 top. Uh, I don't know in the next hour. So people are definitely selling in front of 3000. Okay. And here's the 90 minute chart of Bitcoin. And this is what I'm talking about around 42,300, 42,600. Okay. So, you know, uh, it doesn't pay to FOMO. Want to trade it, trade it. But if you missed it, right, don't buy Bitcoin at 42,300 and don't FOMO into ETH until ETH shows you that it can hold above 3,000. I mean, it's that simple. Now, going back to my earlier work, right? If ETH does take out 3,000, then the market's telling you something about where ETH should be relative to inflation. Okay, so Illuvium, this thing is a, is a beast, right? It, it, it made a 13 top, and now it's po possibly working on a nine top on the short-term charts, okay? You know, if it was really an insane rally, it could go all the way to 619. But again, folks, you know, you got this topping signal, this like warning signal 
from the DeMarc sm Smart Stochastics, okay? So now I'm taking this sort of request game in a different direction, all right? So on this 90-minute chart, I mean, this thing's gone straight up. The 13 top didn't stop it, right? Now it's moving, you know, it's got like, I don't know, two or three more hours, right? Before you're going to get a nine top and you're going to say, okay, with the 13 and then the nine, you know, maybe this is where you take profits given how much, you know, how, how hard it's moved. Okay. Phantom, uh, we did talk about this. You know, I am constructive on Phantom, not investment advice. Okay. Now we seem to be liking this 90 minute chart action. So let's stay with the 90 minute chart, you know, even though that's probably not as good for people watching it over the weekend. Okay. So Ave has resistance at 164 on a short term chart, right? So I mean, there's obviously good support, but man, when you, when you look at this, you know, when you look at this, like when I tell you that there's a warning about volatility with this stochastic, there's no better example than right here. So, you know, I'm guessing that this is where, you know, you'd be taking some profits in Ave. And if Ave goes from 165, right, then people who are hodling it can keep hodling it. Okay. Um, Okay, somebody wants is asking about Cardano. What's up with Cardano? Okay, so my guess is Cardano, like Polkadot and everything else, is very underappreciated. Okay, and possibly undervalued. Okay, I'm, I'm pulling the Cardano chart up here. The graph's not cooperating. All right, so there's the graph. Okay, so Cardano made a nine bottom slowly. And now, you know, it wasn't a sale at 75 and it'll probably grind up to 90 cents, right? And then if it takes out 90 cents, then you can talk about more upside. Now, is, is Algorand also undervalued? Okay, well, you know, uh, this is not the valuation show right? Necessarily. Okay. I do think that there are a lot of people, a lot of venture capital types who just are indiscriminately selling Algorand anytime it approaches a dollar. Now that that's not, I'm not saying that because I want to say something bad about Algorand. That just seems to be the way it is. You'll know when they're done. How do you know? Because it will absolutely smoke to the upside because Algorand's got a lot going for it. Okay, so this is the Cardano 90 minute chart. Okay, probably got, you know, another couple of hours of upside. All right, Let, let's go, let's go back. Steve Conway says Algorand is whatever. Okay, Algorand has resistance at 78 cents. Okay, okay. Sabir says, should I ape into ape? Okay. If you're asking if you should ape into ape, all right, you might want to take a deep breath. Okay. Cause that sounds like fear of missing out. And sometimes that can lead to bad trades. Okay. So if you have a trading strategy for ape, which I'll go back, but we'll look at it again. Okay. So, you know, sandbox had a really nice rally. It pulled back it held support and now it's it's sort of we don't know about sandbox yet let's look at a daily chart see if we can get more clarity okay so i mean you got the 13 bottom and it looks like people are buying dips in sandbox i would say if sandbox has a modestly positive to maybe you know kind of a steady day tomorrow that you may have four or five more days it may just go all the way to a nine top. So right now you're at a three, you may have six more positive days, right? But this of course assumes that it doesn't fall out of bed over the weekend. So remember that if you're taking trading profits, the Russians escalate right before equities open Sunday night. If they, if they succeed, you know, everything goes down. If they don't, it goes up. I mean, it's like that simple. Okay, so people are asking about ApeCoin. Right. 
I'm starting to wonder if, if like, I'm going to be doing like entire ape coin live streams. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about how I'm looking at ape coin. Okay. I had better history somewhere else. Okay, so this is the 15 minute chart of ape coin on Coinbase. Okay. So I'm I'm going to show you how I analyzed this using the hidden pivots method. Now, how do I know the hidden pivots method is going to work with ape coin? <laughs> Folks, I I don't. But the good news about this live stream is is that when you call and ask a question, I will produce an answer. I will produce an answer. Okay? All right, so with this ape coin read, right? Because again, this is Coinbase. This is going to vary all over the place. The fact that ape coin is above fourteen oh five is a good thing. So if you were going to ape into ape coin, right, you could put your stop probably below this fractal at thirteen seventy seven. Now this is a fifteen minute chart. So if you're watching this on Sunday night, first of all, thank you for watching over the weekend. We love you and appreciate you. But, you know, we're working on an ape 15-minute chart. So the 15-minute chart is obviously going to change probably by the end of today, most certainly by the end of the weekend. Now, if we are in a an, an, an massive FOMO phase, the next levels of relevancy in ApeCoin are $15.50. And if this rally continues, all right, the ultimate FOMO zone might be 18 and a half. All right. This is how I would trade ape coin. This would be like my weekend roadmap. So we'll leave it up there for a couple minutes for everybody to just sort of, uh, you know, sort of look at. Okay, super chat for Catboy. Okay, not sure if I have that in this system. Let's let's take a look at. Okay, I'm looking at Catboy here. Okay, this is not cooperating. I'm moving because I know we had a super chat for this and I appreciate that. Okay, here's a one hour chart of Catboy. Okay, so this, this is more difficult to do the hidden pivot method is on because I, I, I need, in order to do that, I need something down here. Okay, but that doesn't stop me. I'll go to something else. Let's go to a fib retracement line and see what we get there. Sometimes what you want to do when these new coins come out is the ultimate test is whether or not they can hold the 62% of their recent run up. Okay. So that's where it started. All right, so 62% is at 0.035. So this is Catboy, 15 minutes. Okay, 62%, 0.035. Now, a brief word about this. 
So of course we want you to make money in altcoins and we want you to party on, have fun and make money. This is an altcoin show. All right. Now <laughs> it, it, it should be a little suspicious, a little bit. If people are absolutely out of their mind to get meme coins, highly speculative incidents, instruments in a highly uncertain world. Certainly you trade this and have fun, but what happens when everyone is in despair? They give up and sell everything. What happens when people get out of their mind bullish? They wind up buying the top. So I don't want you to buy the top. Now, if Catboy holds 0.035, carry on, okay? All right, but if it doesn't, please think about it. All right, CZ Binance just followed Catboy coin. Okay, right? So who follows what on Twitter matters? Our NFT analysts, okay? Our NFT analysts, uh, you know, they, 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 they track who follows who as a way to grade projects. Okay, synthetics. Okay, monster up move. Oh, always like to see things like synthetics mooning. I like the rune chains, the sushis. So 546 is the first level on the daily chart of synthetics, right? 491 was resistance that was obliterated, right? 491 is most likely the level where is synthetics dipped. You would want to see it hold, excuse me. And then 580 is the, it would be possibly the upside target right? For this to have moved or 546. Now, just conceptually speaking, if synthetics is turning around and is going to moon so hard, it'll blow your mind. I will be the happiest guy in the world. If you are in synthetics and you are trapped and you get a 20% or 30% rally, all I'm telling you to do is evaluate your position. Now, the good news is in, for, in synthetics, and this is true all across DeFi, is you've got this bullish downward sloping wedge thing going on. And you have an obvious breakout today. So 580 is resistance. 580 is a short-term upside target. But... You know, what is the strongest FOMO target I could draw in synthetics and still sleep at night? We used to call this the realistic price prediction. Okay. So the realistic price prediction, right? So if it's like a mega move, if it's like ETH is going through 3000 and it's a gap and go, it's $6 and seven cents. I'm sorry, $6. Is that what? what? $6.55. So if you want to dream the big dream in synthetics, that's where it could go because you've got this wedge, right? They tried to hold it down and synthetics is an example. And synthetics always goes first, right? Synthetics is a good example of how they tried to make this formation and kill it and it didn't work, okay? All right, people are noting that, you know, Jasmine is smoking. Okay, people are asking for Phantom and Gala. So let's head over. Remember somebody asking me two days ago if Compound was dead, right? I'm not sure what my answer was. I hope the answer was no, okay? Let's just take a look because I know there's a Compound guy out there. Man, you got the 13 bottom and you got no resistance to 192 on the daily chart. So, you know, this DeFi stuff, this like, you know, this stuff that everybody gave up on. See, folks, that's the key, right? I can chart your coin. I can try to make a call. What the most important thing is for you to understand in your coin when you're not listening to me is, you know, does everyone hate this? Because if everyone hates it, no one's long it, okay? Now, Gala looks stuck. That's what somebody said. Okay, Gal is not moving. It's one of those coins where it doesn't do anything. And then when it goes, it goes. So I think Gala is one of these momentum coins 
because it's kind of expensive from a valuation point of view, as I understand it, right? 24 cents is the key level in Gala. It, it's failed up there three times. Now, keep in mind, NFT Los Angeles is coming up at the end of the month. So a lot of these NFT-related coins, if there's going to be catalysts at conferences, because that's the way it used to work in equities, right? Like, you know, analysts or, you know, executives would present about forecasts at conferences. And sometimes you can have run-ups in sectors ahead of those, comp uh, ahead of those uh, conferences, okay? Somebody says, Gala, not a buy until 17 cents. I, I have supported 21, but I understand, you know, I understand that, you know, if you don't want to buy stuff, you want to buy it when it's down, folks, it's going to be a long year. I know it's an update on a Friday and I appreciate everybody tuning in and hitting the like button. <clears throat> okay. Somebody made the live stream from Oklahoma. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. All right. Thor chain. We did this already, but we'll do it again. I didn't do it on the mark. Okay. So Rune on a daily chart, has got a nine, a nine top, right? And people immediately bought the dip. So earlier I was saying, you know, you don't know whether or not there's going to be one more dip in Thorchain. All right. All right, so my inclination in Thorchain, even though I love it, <laughs> and I'll regret saying this because I think it can go so much higher, is you have to be careful, to be careful about FOMOing in to something that was outperforming when the market was going down and FOMOing in when the market is going up. Now, Rune has corrected, okay? There might be one more dip in Rune, not investment advice, do your own research. But man, when I look at this, you know, if Rune is above, say, 829, so this is a different read from before. I know that Rune has to be above like seven and a half. But man, if you see Rune start closing above those wicks from earlier in the year, because, oh my God, this thing killed people. You believe this thing went from $8 to three? You know, I, I love it and I got stopped out and then I just started loving it again. Okay. So there is a nine top of here. You have been paid to respect nine tops and bottoms. So I would say this is not a FOMO zone for Rune. You would wait to get a dip or just wait to see if that nine top gives you that counter trend move before something else big happens. When you go to buy ApeCoin and you hear Bill's voice saying, don't FOMO, okay? Yes, don't FOMO when everyone else is FOMOing. That's a top, right? ApeCoin, we talked about some levels. You want to trade ApeCoin, like trade it, as in like buy it and put a stop in. Yeah, you could do that, of course, right? It's crypto. Let's have fun. It's Friday, but don't FOMO into ApeCoin and marry it. Okay. Okay. We have waves. Okay. Somebody was asking for RNDR. That finally did come up. Okay. So on a four hour chart, you know, nothing particularly exciting going happened, going on seems to be resistance at 256. But I suspect maybe this is like really washed out. Ooh, well, okay. So supports at 225. It got down there and held. This is an odd 13 top in a sideways to down market. So, you know, with some of this metaverse stuff, some of this growth stuff, it seems like, you know, there was a South by Southwest party for Sandbox with Paris Hilton as the DJ. And sometimes, you know, given that I'm over the age of 35, I go, wow, is that insane FOMO? Or is that a sign that some of these metaverse plays can actually do better one at a time? Because I remember Sandbox mooned, right? <laughs> Sandbox kind of mooned before South by Southwest, 
right? For anybody who doesn't know what that is overseas, that's like a big popular music festival that went from being something very small and something very local in a music city like Austin, Texas, to like this absolute mega festival where it's actually gotten to the point where when I was down there, it was deserted because it's $2,000 for a wristband to get into the premier events. Anyway, Sandbox mooned before South by Southwest, right? Now, there were probably some announcements, and Metaverse could do better. Question is, like I said, how much speculative juices are going to be left? Because a lot of times what you get on Fridays, you just get these massive FOMO blow-offs. So let's, let's see where the market is. Okay. So, you know, we have ETH up 5%, pushing, pushing 3,000. Okay. Let's go back to Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. Because sometimes we stream, we stream for like an hour or so. And it can be interesting for anybody who's watching the video. And we always appreciate people who watch the video later is to check Bitcoin as we're watching it or Ethereum as we're doing the stream so you can get a flavor of how, you know, we can adopt analysis. Now, somebody says, I just took profits. Oh, wait, look at this. Wait, you mean selling at resistance worked? What? Okay, 43,000 in Bitcoin, 42,327, excuse me. You found people selling, right? Let's look at Ethereum. It's going to be the 90 minute chart of Ethereum. Okay. And this will probably just serve to remind everybody. All right. So Ethereum is doing well and it continue to do well, but it's not shocking that somebody would take profits when resistance is up at 30,036. Okay. Do I believe in full moon cycle? Yes, I do. Wrong again says not touching the metaverse. Okay. Please show the cat boy chart. Okay. Here is the cat boy chart as best as I can, as best as I can draw it. Okay. Seems like people are going to explode if I don't talk about cat boy. Luckily, I've kept it up on the screen here. All right. Now, again, folks. I work for an altcoin company, okay? So I want you to have fun in crypto, but I really don't want you to get killed, all right? Now, if Catboy comes down to 0.035 and holds, you know, it holds its 62% retracement and you want to play spec, right? You want to gamble, that's fine. Just remember, you know, we have massive inflation, you know, inflation's at 12%, rates are at zero, problem, okay? And the world is at war problem that usually can give you these like, you know, quick, fast, you know, smart kind of like, you know, smart money rallies where, you know, they'll come out. Okay. Let's do some ape coin again. Let's go back to the Coinbase chart. Cause again, if I don't do ape coin, I know people are going to explode along with cat boy. So let's just see how we're doing on our ape coin analysis from earlier. So I had 1405 as a key level, right? With the stop below 1377. Okay. King says he needs the roadmap. Okay. Okay. Bill wants to know about metaverse gaming tokens. Okay. They all look the same. I think for gaming tokens, uh, I would stick with our analysts on our YouTube channel. We actually have a guy hidden gems. Okay, who, who specializes in gaming and metaverse. Okay, so I don't have a lot of these tokens up on this system. I can look at Hero. I have looked at that before. Okay, let's see if I can get Hero up here. Okay, so, you know, when I look at this, I'm like, th this to me looks like an epic give up trade, right? I mean, look, this is Meta Hero.
Okay. Now with all these coins, you know, this is pretty far away from its moving average, right? Okay. You've got the bullish stochastics divergence, which means there was a big new low in price and there wasn't a big new low in the momentum indicators. So you may have, if you get one more big up day, I would say, right? Meta hero can do better. And of course, you know, this is classic crypto, right? Oh, wait, there's inflation. Oh, wait, it's World War III. Oh, no problem. Let's buy the shit out of ApeCoin. Metaverse, load the boat. That's just how it works, right? People hate it, right? Uh, or people get frustrated and then all of a sudden there's a catalyst and boom, we're off to the races. Now, if you're going to play this game, just make sure you get out before everyone else does. That's what I can tell you. And if you miss the trade, you miss the trade. Okay. Thank you, Bill. I have been doing DCA on comp. I really like the project. All right. You're welcome. Bill, I need to see BTC above 40K for about five to seven days before I can see jumping back in there. Okay. All right. Somebody's asking about Efinity. Okay, so there is Efinity. Okay, looks like bears are in control. Let's see if there's anything coming from the Fib speed resistance indicator. Okay, so, you know, when you have these Fib speed resistance lines, okay, so the level to be watching is 0.42, okay? So if affinity is above 0.42, it can go up. It might be able to go up a lot. But if affinity is not above 0.42, then, you know, you have the bears in charge again. But honestly, if I was wrong this, right, and I had been suffering, I don't know, give him a chance. Let's see what happens at 0.42. This Williams moving average system is trying to turn around. So, you know, if, if, it, if it's going with momentum, go with it. Okay. Can I look at our weave? By the way, folks, you know, while we're on the subject of all these altcoins, you can check all these on tokenmetrics.com and you can see what your coins grades are as the market moves up, you can also see what coins the AI is picking. Okay. So are we, all right. So this doesn't look like a FOMO situation. Okay. It, it looks like it's making a base or it's just sitting there. I always get a little bit weird when I see that Williams moving average getting close to zero, right? In other words, if this was going to go up, it probably would have happened already. So I'm, I'm not, not hating on your coin, but all I'm saying is you don't want to just sit here. It's going to break out. And there's going to be a catalyst and LFG, let's go. But if there's no catalyst, you know, you're vulnerable if sellers come back in. Do you need a computer to use token metrics? Token metrics will work on an iPad, okay? Um, there's no mobile app yet. However, there is a mobile app for Token Metrics TV. Okay, what is Token Metrics TV? Let's see if I can. Boldly come in and share this if I can find it. Token Metrics TV is an app. Okay, it, it's like our YouTube channel but it looks like Netflix. I don't think I've ever talked about it on the show. So if someone's asking me, all right, <laughs> you know, what can I get? Well, it looks like Token Metrics TV is free. It is free. It is free. You can get it on a phone and a, a, a tablet or a television. So you can go to like the Apple app store 
And then, you know, here is like, there's my fat head there. So here is, it gives it to you like it's clean. So, you know, YouTube, we put out a lot of content. So here's the market update, right? Here's crypto deep dive, right? Here's NFT gems, right? Here is women in crypto. So it's kind of like TV. So feel free to check out Token Metrics TV. Okay, I'm taking one more. Okay, here comes ad share. Wow. Okay. So you have this interesting, weird wick going on. That's kind of strange. See if I can get rid of that, get a different data point. Okay. So I got a better data point. Okay. Hopefully this is the right symbol. This looks like different data than the last one. So this is ad shares, plural. Okay. I get the feeling that that's not the right symbol. Let's just check this one, one more time. Okay. You're right. It is the right symbol. Okay. I'm leaving it. Okay. So this is ad shares. Okay, I know you, you're waiting for me to do this. So I have to do this by hand. I have to adjust everything by hand when I go to this other system. Okay, so in ad shares, okay, it's mooning. Okay, so this is ad share daily. Okay, the key technical level that I have is at 375. Okay. Now, if it's above 375, the next level is probably 556 or just below that, it would be right at the old high of 466. So if it's above 375, it can go to 466, particularly if you have one of these days where kind of everyone takes profits. Right. And then like it's seven o'clock tonight, everyone FOMOs in because they can't control themselves. <laughs> okay. Um, trade the market. Okay. Mike says Jasmine is blowing up right now. All right. So let's check, let's check Jasmine one more time. Considering like the most epic low of all time was made on the air. As I told some dude who was calling in about it. Okay. Yes, this is definitely mooning. Okay, let's have one final word on Jasmine. Okay, very hard to find resistance here. Let's actually look here and see what the FIB extension levels are giving us. So this is like Jasmine and ApeCoin all day, every day. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna end the show with the fib extension with the fib speed resistance for Jasmine to see if we can get any indications. All right, so I know I did Jasmine a couple different times. So if you want to be a, an absolute lunatic in Jasmine, right? If you want to be like you know, what are, what are just the biggest FOMO levels you could draw on the chart? 
All right. So this is where the epic give up trade started. Okay. At 11 cents, 0.115. Now, why would I draw this? Well, it's a fib extension line, a fib speed resistance line. There's no resistance here until 0.074 at least the way I'm drawing it here. Okay. Now it's up 50%. So people are going to FOMO in. I'm, I'm going to tell them, you know, buying something up 50% is not always smart, but you know, when you look at the Elliott wave, I mean, geez, this thing is so, this so destroyed. It doesn't fit on the screen. So why would I draw? Why would I even say 11 cents is possible? Well, because that give up trade was so huge that frequently what markets can do, right? So let me take this off because it's confusing. So in Elliott wave terms, it's called the previous fourth, AKA start of give up. The give up trade in Jasmine started at 11 and a half cents. So sometimes what markets can do is just organically go back and retest where the give up trade started. Now, did you buy something up 50%? Rarely does it pay to buy something up 50%. Okay. Honestly, but if you want to draw stuff on charts, right? 0 0.074 or 0.1175 is possible. Okay. Stephen Conway said, Jasmine will never reach that all time high again. Okay. Reasonable. The market gives you a 50 or 60% gain in one day. Sometimes you should pay yourself, but if you want some moon levels, if you want a moon chart for Jasmine, this is it. Okay, folks, I got to wrap this up. Let's go over what we talked about. Crypto is experiencing a euphoric rally because the Russians attempt to escalate the war and stop the markets from going up or stop the stock market going up has not worked. Okay. Their propaganda on TV is backfiring on that at the moment. Now that doesn't mean they can't act scary later, but for now, crypto is going up. Now, if they come out on Sunday and scare the market, that'll be it. So be mindful of profit-taking opportunities in ETH between 3000 and 3200 and in the $43,000 neighborhood in Bitcoin, okay? Now, if the market just keeps on going, that's great. That will probably help benefit altcoins. You trade this thing for like a three-day to two-week basis, right? If you have profits, don't be a pig. If you missed it, you missed it. It's okay, okay? It's okay, all right? Eventually, after this FOMO move is done, right? Whether it's ETH at 3000 or Bitcoin at 47 K, whichever it is, right? When oil starts going back up, that's going to hurt crypto. Why? Because when oil goes up, crypto goes down based on mathematical correlation. Now I'm ending with that because I want you to party on. I want you to have fun. I want you to make money being long, but I don't want you to get killed. If something happens, over the weekend. So make sure if you make money, protect that money. All right. Have a good weekend. All right. This is Bill Noble, right? I will see you on Monday.